Today, we're going to talk about Redemption Wholesaler. I'll tell you why I'm so excited about this. This solves the speed of cash flow issue that some of you guys are having with the normal method of surplus funds retrieval. We're talking about a one-week payout, and it requires zero out of pocket from you with a $25,000 profit bump in a week using the skills you've already honed with the surplus funds program. So hear me out. Here's why you need this, even if your sole focus up to now has been surplus funds. Property undersold at auction, you can make about as much or more money with this method than you can with surplus and get paid in a week. 25 grand in a week. Now, some of you guys have our original national redemption program. It's in the Diamond Bundle, the Diamond and Diamond 2.0. This is different. In the original, you approach the ex-owner of the property that is already sold at the foreclosure, and you redeem the property. For In some states, we list about seven, I believe. The owner can actually come back up to a year after the foreclosure and redeem it, pay off the past due taxes and some fees, and get the property back. This allows you to do this for them, but not with your money. Some states let the owners come back after the sale and pay to get the property back. It's called post-sale redemption. That's where you come in and you and the ex-owner both win. Part of this method is you get a deed to the property. Okay, You can later flip the property and give the owner a portion of the profit. You can also approach the high bidder and let them know you're redeeming the property and often they'll pay you to go away and not exercise the right of the redemption. That's a major loophole. That's the original National Redemption. Now we've made it even better, and let me tell you how this came about. Recently, I got a call from someone wanting to buy the Redemption program, National Redemption, and do it on their own. He had some experience in wholesaling and asked if he could do this, but as a wholesaler, flipping the deal to an investor and having them redeem it and take it from there. Well, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> And we have an incredible experience wholesaling property. Now, given the current market where investors are struggling to find deals, it makes sense. It's a quick money move. You get the cash flow. Keep listening for more about that. And as a bonus, of course, it also benefits the ex-owner, both in speed and money. Here's where this gets interesting. This is going to work in about seven states with post-sale redemption. You do it online from anywhere. You don't come out of pocket any money and you have the deed. We're talking about making 25K on a deal, given the margins on these. It's DIY. You don't need us to partner on any of these deals. You don't have to come out of pocket. Often the owner is incredibly easy to get in touch with because they're still in the property, particularly in these post-sale redemption states. Very few people even know how to work redemption deals, and no one knows this angle. There's usually no other debt to worry about because the home sold at a tax auction. Now, let me give you an example. Property is, gonna, is going to a tax sale over unpaid taxes and fees, let's say approximately $20,000. House sells for hundred grand at the foreclosure, and there was no other debt against the property. That's an $80,000 in surplus, so you can go after the eighty grand and make 26 to 30 grand, uh, depending on how you, what you charge after paying for attorneys. We always recommend use attorneys. It's typical to make 35 to 40% on a deal using our method. Um, and then you take out the attorney cost of a couple grand in most instances. The owner would get 48 to 52,000 again, depending on what you charge. You would both typically get paid in about three months. However, in these redemption states, and this is why there's less competition in these states too, by the way, you often have to wait until the redemption period is over to claim the funds, which could add on another three months until you get paid. What if the property undersold? What if it's worth 300 grand and it's sold, like we talked about, for $100,000? Now, I know what you guys are saying. Sean, you've told us properties sell at market value or higher. Which is it? Listen, in states that give the ex-owner the ability to redeem or buy back the property after the sale, wholesale redemption, there is more risk to the high bidder. They could put a roof on and fix it up, and then the owner comes in and redeems it, and they're not going to get that money back. And the high bidder loses that money, anything they've thrown in it. So yes, in those states, properties sell often 
for less than market value because of that risk that's introduced with the post-sale redemption. So here's what you do. You make a deal with the ex-owner to redeem the property, getting the deed and an assignable contract signed. You agree to pay them 20% of the net profit from the property after it is redeemed and flipped. You then flip that contract, you assign it, and you give the deed to the property to the investor and get 25 grand as an assignment fee. You're done. Out of the deal in a week with 25 grand in your pocket, no attorney, no good faith buyout, no waiting, 25 grand in a week. The investor redeems it, pays off the past due taxes and any other fees. Let's say that's 20 grand, past due taxes and fees. The investor pays 50 grand to fix up the property in order to flip it. He sells it for 300 grand. The investor's net is that 300,000, let's say five, five grand in closing costs, 25 grand he's already paid to you, 20 grand to redeem it, and another 50 grand to fix it up. So his net, initial net, is around 200 grand. Now he pays the ex owner 20%, 40 grand. That leaves him a net profit of $160,000. Every investor on the planet will take that deal and look around how many homes are selling for $300,000 and above. I don't know where you are. Here, it's all of them. Every investor on the planet will take that deal. So, you made 25 grand in a week. The ex owner that lost it at tax foreclosure makes 40 grand in probably about two months. The only issue with surplus funds has always been the speed of cash flow. We just solved that. And here's the other, and by the way, you're using your existing skill set if you've done any kind of surplus funds work. Here's the other point. Let's say the owner is aware of the surplus. Do you think they'd rather get 40K in two months or wait up to six months or more? to make 48 to 52. Guys, they just lost their house in a tax foreclosure over 20 grand. They are broke and homeless and need a quick payout. Heck, if they're living in the house, draw up the agreement to allow them to live in the property until it's redeemed or even until it's flipped. That's a little powerful. Let's say I'm wrong and the owner would rather wait. Okay, work them on the surplus funds claim. <laughs> you still can do that. This is why you want this in your toolbox. Not only can this give you and the owner quicker payouts solving the speed of cash flow issue, but it gives the owner time to get their finances in order and gives them an option no one else is going to give them. Finding investors for these deals is as easy as posting the deal on Facebook or on a local investor blog. The deed is in your name. It's an easy flip. It's an assignable contract. Guys, we've been working surplus funds for over 20 years. We've taught surplus funds for over 15 years, and we've been flipping property for over 25. 20,000 plus deals worked. Before us, no one worked redemption property, the original National Redemption Program. Before us, no one used the bankruptcy loophole to retrieve surplus funds where the owner died or wouldn't work with you or there's too much debt. That's our surplus hybrid system. Before us, no one reactivated inactive companies that were due surplus or got homes owned by inactive companies for next to nothing. That's our zombie business reviver system. No one has our innovation. No one has our experience. If you're serious about surplus funds or flipping property, we are your source. This is part two of the Redemption Wholesaler program that we were talking about. This is actually an overview where I'm going to take you through and address a couple of questions I got from the first video. First and foremost, you guys ask which states do we cover with this or which states have these redemption periods? They are Connecticut, I'm reading off my phone, Connecticut, Delaware, Georgia, Missouri, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Texas. Now I'm going to actually walk you guys through a deal just so you understand, show you a deal that actually would have worked. Cause I know a lot of you aren't believing that you can find property where it actually sold for under market value these days, but it's more frequent than you thought. Another question I got besides the States is how long is the period? Well, and these are the lower end, uh, Connecticut, six months, 60 days for Delaware. So that would be a tough one to make work, right? Georgia, 12 months, Missouri, 12 months, South Carolina, 12 months, Tennessee, one to 12 months. That depends on the type of property it was. You guys are going to run into homestead. I'm going to actually show you a statute to give you a better idea of, of how you're going to be able to research this. And then Texas, we've got down six months, but I can tell you that if it was a homestead property, it can go beyond that. I would automatically assume six months if I were you. And you're going to see something odd in Texas as well. What you're going to see in Texas 
is not only do the counties foreclose, but actual school districts. I know it's weird, but people have in many counties a separate school tax. So this is, now let's talk about the example because a lot of people lost me on this. God, they got lost. So it's going for sale over unpaid taxes for 20 grand. You can see that here. House sells for 100. There was 80 in surplus. You could go off the 80. I broke this down here. You can, guys, you can go ahead and pause the video if you want. Um, I wasn't trying to speak too quickly and blow over it. But you could go after that surplus. However, you could, in fact, use a redemption play. You make a deal to redeem the property. You're going to pay them 20% of the net profit from the sale. All right. You flip the contract, assign the contract and the deed to the property because you have them sign the deed to you, to the investor, and get a $25,000 assignment fee. You're done, out of the deal in a week, and twenty-five grand in your pocket. No notary, excuse me, no attorney, no good faith buyout. No waiting, 25 grand in a week, right? The investor redeems it, paying off the past due taxes. So he's going to have to pay off the 20 grand. He has to pay off 50 grand to fix it up. Let's say it's a fix up. Uh, investor sells it for 300. The investor's net is 300 less the five grand in closing costs he's going to have. 20 grand to redeem it, right? He had to, he had to redeem it earlier. He already paid that. And 50 grand to fix it up. He also paid you 20, you know, the 25 new investor's net is 200 grand less 20% of that. 40 grand to the ex owner. Okay. The investor pays that. I had a question on that. All right. So let's stop a second. I want to show you how this would work in real life. I'm actually going to show you a deal where had you been on it before the person that bought it resold it, you could have made a stupid amount of money. Real deal. Before I do that, we're going to be looking at Texas. So this is the actual Texas tax code for the right of redemption. And you'll see that. You can have up to two years to redeem it on a homestead property. You guys can certainly see this yourself. It's under uh, tech. You can literally look it up, guys. Texas public law statutes on redemption. Here's the tax code section. Okay. Texas tax code section 34.21. All right. You can look that up. How much time you have. And they have to pay 25% over for the if they redeem it in the first year. And they actually... Uh, we're using it as a homestead property or, or as a mil mineral right. I will let you read this at your leisure. However, the deal I'm going to show you in a minute was neither of that. So they only have six months to redeem. But let me show you what happened. So that's further down. And this is something I want to bring up very, very important. This is why we put, by the way, that's why we put six months as the time period. We wanted to give you worst case. This is important. An owner of real property who is entitled to redeem the property under this section may not transfer the owner's rights to redemption to another person. Any instrument purporting to transfer the owner's right of redemption is void. None of our agreements are a transfer of right of redemption. We do not do that. We actually have a contract for sale and we have them sign the deed over to us. Very important. I need to bring this up because, guys, you don't, some people buy my programs and they go, oh, I'm going to change this and I'm just going to buy, I'm going to have them sell his right of redemption to me. No, that's illegal. There's a reason we use the forms we use, okay, and the meth methods we use. We want to stay legal. So here's your example. This is a, a list, excess funds, they call them in uh, Dallas County, in Texas. This is a list from Dallas County. The one that I highlighted is the one we're going to take a look at, okay? Uh, you've got a case number to the side. You can't see that now because I moved it. But um, Dallas County versus William Donovan Moore sold for excess. Actually, the excess funds created was $30,150.03. Okay. You could work that as a surplus funds. But let's say you got in touch with the guy and he wanted to make more money than you could pay him. Let's say you were going to take, a, I don't know, some of you guys take as little as 20, 25%. I don't know why you do, but some of you do. But he wanted to make. A little bit more money or he was he was telling you he was convinced look i know it sold cheap i'm telling you it's worth a lot of money well you could say Let, let's back up a second let me check into this you've got the guy's name this is the dallascounty.org it's the county clerk's recording office i'm using this to find this person i had put their name in it was william donovan moore i found a link in there to this particular deed let me move this now here's the beauty of these sale deeds they tell you what it's sold for all right you didn't see that in the surplus funds or excess funds list Sixty-seven thousand is what the guy paid for it and the guy told you it was a building lot let's say so this is redfin turns out it's a 1.4 acre lot 1.24 acre lot in dallas texas well apparently land is worth a heck of a lot of money there 
The Redfin estimate was $206,364 as to the value. I'm showing you this one because the guy actually bought it and flipped it. So I wanted you to see that this can actually work, okay? Not even a home, no fix-up involved. No fix-up involved on this property. So it's 1.24 acres. Redfin says it was listed at $200,000 and the guy actually sold it. I'll show you that. Actually, that was the sales price. He sold it for $206,364. So for those of you guys, and you can look it up, you can plug in the address. I got the address off of here, okay? It was. It actually told me exactly what the address was. 13122 Land Drive, Dallas, Dallas County, Texas. Guys, look it up. Pull it up online. You'll see the actual sale record where it was sold for over $200,000. The guy had paid 67. Texas requires you give a premium of 25% when you redeem within that time period. This was just a six month window. So in addition to 67, would have paid about 17,000, let's call it 84,000 uh, to redeem it. You wouldn't have done that. You would have had your investor do that. You would have told your investor, look, owner wants 40 grand. Owner wants 40. I want 25, that's 65. It's going to take 84 to redeem the 67,000 plus 25%. Okay. 84 plus 40 is 124 plus 20, 25 is 149,000. It's worth 200 all day. And it's land, which goes quick in Dallas County, Texas. Guy takes one look at this deal. He's going to do it for a set dollar amount. He doesn't have to give the guy a percentage of the net. He can go, screw it. I'm going to make 50 grand just for redeeming this thing and putting it on the market and having it sell in a month. This is a great example. Now look, this program is a DIY. I listed the seven states. You're going to have to do some research into the statutes to make sure you're clean, make sure you're good, and make sure it's an, idea, it's an area you want to go after. If there's only a two-month redemption period, I wouldn't go after that particular area, right? We just listed it in there because it is an option. And again, like I said before, you can always work it as a surplus funds deal. This is just a great pool in your toolbox, just like the other programs we've done before, surplus funds, hybrid, uh, the surplus hybrid program that teaches you if there's nobody alive or you can't reach them or if they don't want to work with you, but they went into bankruptcy two years before or after, you can go ahead and tell the bankruptcy court where the, the money is. They have a priority claim and they'll give you a 25% referral. That's the surplus hybrid. If this had been a business and the business had gone out of business, you could actually claim the excess funds by buying the business and recording that with the uh, Secretary of State. That's called the Zombie Business Reviver. We're the only ones, guys, doing this kind of crazy stuff. I'm telling you, having this in your toolbox, how many times, those of you guys, especially your experience guys, how many times have you had an owner talk about what the value of the property was, was really higher? You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter, right? It's sold. It kind of does if you've got this program. If you have any questions, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Time, you can call me Monday through Friday, 704-791-9398.